Hello again, this is Dale from The Investment Journey. Uh, this is a quick video to do uh, a fast uh, shareholder um, and stock analysis of SafeStore. Um, it's a FTSE 250 company, which is a REIT uh, based in the UK, which does self-storage. It has a business model which is uh, very similar to Walmart, which I'll show in a minute. So who are they? Well, they've got 122 UK stores uh, clustered around the big conurbations, uh, some great locations in London, uh, also in the northwest near Manchester um, and Birmingham. Um, and they also have um, locations uh, clustered around Paris and they're developing some in Barcelona. Um, so they're really going after the, uh, the prestige locations. Um, like I said, they're a real estate uh, investment trust which effectively gives special tax status in the UK um, as long as um, returns are given back to shareholders to a high proportion, which, um, which they're doing. Um, and it serves both the public and the business sector. Um, you've probably seen the blue and yellow buildings from time to time if you've driven around the UK. Um, just a, a kind of note, uh, the dis disclaimer at the back of the uh, presentation, please read the small print. This isn't investment advice. This is just uh, sharing some research for your entertainment and education purposes. But uh, and for the purposes of disclosure, um, I am long a safe store. I'm a happy shareholder um, of the company um, and I'll explain why in a minute. So if we look, um, if we look at revenue, uh, EBITDA and dividend, uh, we can see there is um, quite a consistent pattern of growth. Um, it has been um, really impressive growth since the um, since the company was listed on the stock market. I've gone back right the way through from the start of the listing to now. Um, it is a classic compounder. Um, this is it compared against uh, its biggest rival in the UK, uh, Big Yellow Box. Um, and you can see that it's outperformed consistently over time. And why do I say it's in the uh, in the Walmart mold? Well, basically, Walmart had a business model where they understand how much revenue and how much profit they anticipate to get from every square meter of, uh, of space in each um, particular store. They have a plan to build so many stores per year that increases the revenue that increases the profit and the primary uh, challenge um, for Walmart when it comes to their real estate was positioning the new store in the right location to capture the right level of, um, of customer base. And this is exactly the same, you know, they need to put self storage where it's accessible to people uh, and businesses um, with disposable income uh, who are likely to require um, additional storage beyond the house or their office or the warehouse that, they've, that they own as a business. Um, but they can really calculate um, exactly how much a new store will bring them in terms of revenue. And that's really the growth story here. Um, get each um, of the locations to above 70% uh, occupancy. That gives them uh, a good level of profit. Reinvest those profits in acquiring either competitor, um, competitor self-storage um, companies to consolidate the market or to develop new stores themselves, either through purchase or through rental and repeat and repeat and repeat. And, uh, and I really like that. And it's simple. There's normally only two to three staff per location. So their actual OPEX is really, really low. Um, their tax because of the special status is pretty low. Um, it's higher in France where it's 33%. It's actually zero in the UK um, and continue to grow. So um, that's really uh, part of the thesis. Um, I'll go into it a little bit more detail now. So they've got growing revenues between five and 10% compounded uh, annually. S what's really interesting is the profits grow linear with the revenue growth. Um, and that's been the pattern since the inception of the company, which is great. Um, they've got relatively low levels of debt, especially for a real estate company. Um, the uh, the debt's less than 50%, it's actually less than 40%, so that's great. Um, it's got high, high margins, so net profit is 36.8%, which is really healthy. And probably the biggest one, it's got a really sticky business model. What do I mean by that? It's really simple to access. You can uh, go and acquire space in SafeStore um, really easily. 
Um, it's actually they give you a discount uh, for the first few months to attract new customers in. But once you've dumped uh, all of your uh, excess uh, belongings, whether you're a business or a person, into the storage location, it's quite difficult uh, from a psychological perspective to go and, uh, and take it all out again. Um, so of course you do have some uh, transitional um, people who just come and use it for moving house, uh, moving office, things like that. And they do it very short turnaround. But a lot of people have excess amount of equipment or, or materials. Um, they go, they rent the space, they get uh, caught into the subscription. They forget that really that they're paying it. It just becomes a standard cost they expect per month um, and they don't have the time or the energy to go and, um, and basically dispose of the, um, the materials. And so they just keep paying a rental fee uh, month after month. Um, you know, and subscription uh, like uh, businesses are really, um, are really predictable and that's great. Um, it's also got really good geographic locations and proximity. Some of the locations it's got in London and Paris would be very difficult to replicate. So that's kind of a business moat um, and they're developing uh, more and more, um, which is really good. Um, and of course, the light macro tailwind, populations are growing, uh, urbanisation is continuing, uh, people are becoming more mobile, so sometimes they need to store stuff as they move uh, temporarily between different locations. Um, these all drive growth and storage um, to serve these markets. And an interesting fact is um, the self-storage market in the UK and in Europe uh, is only about 25% uh, the size of what it is in North America. So if we see that continued trend towards using self-storage, uh, there's some natural uh, growth in the addressable market, which is good. And then of course, headwinds against uh, economic cycle, um, sure. Um, as with uh, all real estate, um, the overall economy uh, drives economic activity, spending, and will have an impact on, on the self-storage market. However, the last few weeks we've seen the coronavirus really decimate the stock market. Um, safe store holdings hasn't really budged so much. Um, it's not dropped anywhere near as much as the, uh, as the index, which is really good. Um, and so it will be moderately impacted, but generally it should also be quite resilient. Um, it is impacted by the housing market. The less activity in the housing market, the less um, self-storage coming from uh, the normal um, public. And, um, and of course, the actual value of the property portfolio will be affected by real estate prices in general. Um, in my um, intrinsic value calculation, you'll see later, I've actually discounted uh, the positive and negative effects um, of real estate pricing. Um, you know, my view is until they until they sell, um, they're not really impacted by. They're not really realizing any of the theoretical paper benefits of the um, of the property going up and down, and that's kind of an additional margin of safety that I'm not really factoring into the uh, the pricing, which is good. And now here comes the interesting one: um, using discounted cash flow analysis. Um, meeting to meet my minimum 10% rate of return and using the uh, current uh, compounded annual growth rate from last year's figures for the next five years and then going to a terminal value um, 3% to match uh, the global economy afterwards. Um, I get to an intrinsic value calculation of uh, £7.30 per share and to give me my uh, margin of safety um, I'm looking to buy at uh, around £5.11. Um, unfortunately, uh, currently the market price is sat at 798 and I would really, even as an existing shareholder, I would really love that, to see that come down um, in order to be able to acquire some more um, for a good um, for a good price. Uh, unfortunately, it's been fairly resilient at the moment, um, but uh, this is on my watch list uh, perpetually um, when it reaches uh, in and around that target price or the fundamentals of the business uh, improve slightly, um, which gives um, a new calculation for the 
uh, intrinsic value, uh, then I'll be um, trying to, to acquire more. But at the moment, it's not uh, a buy for me. It's, it's a hold, but I do really like the business. Um, you can see that the historic performance being outstanding has, uh, has driven the uh, P ratio to be higher than, uh, than its main competitor, um, which is probably fair given that it's, um, it's delivering higher business metrics and its uh, rate of um, increase uh, for stock price has been better. Um, it's still well competitively placed against other UK REITs and the UK market overall. So yeah, summarise, um, I like it, but I can't buy it. Um, not yet anyway. But um, yeah, I really enjoy the company. Thanks very much for listening. Bye.